Hi, everybody. It's Tyler here at Bex Reels checking in. It's Megazena 96789X coming in from Hawaii. These are your Hawaii re uh, region champions as well, too. Both uh, competing both in V5 and JROTC uh, as well, too. So really awesome uh, team here. And we're talking to them during V5 high school. Overall, really cool robot they have here. Full rebuild as we go through on this. A lot of great stuff we'll be talking about. Really uh, great uh, wall stake scoring back and D scoring like I just saw in their last match as well too. So excited to talk more about that. We'll be getting more of an overview on this robot and talking about uh, from the other side of things as well too. Uh, interview, uh, interviewing improvements that this team's been working on both uh, within their own team and also within uh, some of their junior teams as well too. So let's learn more about them coming up here on Fits and Parts. This video on fun is brought to you by viewers like you and also in partnership with the following. The Robotics Education and Competition Foundation provides fantastic programs for students from elementary school all the way through college. These include VEX, Aerial Drone Competition, Online Challenges, JROTC, Grow Powered, Scholarships, Certifications, and so much more. To discover these exciting opportunities, visit recf.org and get connected. Aaron, there's a lot to break down this row. As mentioned, it's a full rebuild here, but let's start out with the corner splitter. Walk me through that, and we'll start just kind of go through of many different attributes of this robot. Yeah, of course. So on this corner splitter here, something really special, I think, personally, about our corner splitter is that many teams don't run a C-channel over their polycarb piece or Delrin piece, but we're able to just crop and just slice this part off and so that you can see that how the ring kind of just rides along the polycarb part and the metal part. And so this allows us to keep this stability to hold this second, this first stage of our intake, as well as be able to efficiently take from the corners. And looking at, uh, from a Master Agi standpoint here at Bex Worlds, um, how has that been impacting your Master Agi overall? Yeah, so actually for every single auto that we have, we take from the corners. And so getting that extra ring in auto is really, really helpful just to get an extra point Really, the auto bonus being six points is just super crucial to setting up for the match and the overall win. Walk me through what you have. Uh, let's go up through your intake. I know we're going to be talking about uh, many different attributes as we kind of go through. So what else do you want to cover? So something really interesting about our intake as well is that this part here, as soon as the ring comes up here, it already makes contact with the hooks. And a lot of teams run rubber bands and some, it's a little like, uh, like rubber, like poly, some, some sort of thing that will retain the ring here. We run zip ties, one across and two up. That way there is always consistency and there is never a ring that will get stuck or jam or go outwards. And so just that ability to keep the ring in control as it goes all the way up the intake really, really helps. As we continue on in this robot here, uh, many other things. Uh, one of the things we are talking earlier, made some great improvements to your mogul uh, clamp on this. Talk about what you have here. Yeah, of course. So on our mogul clamp here, something really special that I don't really see on too many teams is that we run screws all the way down. So we run four screws and actually we jam nut. It's a lot of work, but we, we run jam nuts and nylock nuts here so that this keeps the mogul clamp super consistent because of its ability to self-lock and with its ability to hold the mogul efficiently, efficiently with this like four bar kind of structure, we were able to also steal mobile goals from other teams or score rings onto them as long as we clamp onto it. Uh, anything else that you want to highlight on your end for this robot? Uh, something else I'd like to point out would be like our ring rush mechanism here. And so very simply this hook here goes into the rings and just locks itself onto the rings. This allows us to do a really efficient ring rush auto and allows us to run like uh, an auto that gets like a full goal after after auto. Very cool. Uh, let's pass over to Kayla, talk about uh, your uh, aligner and arm and stuff like that. And then we're going to be talking a bit more in regards to uh, presentation and how your team has been approaching that. Yeah. So this arm here is actually new to us specifically for Worlds. Uh, before this, all the way up to our state championship, we've had a four bar and it was like a casket, like a little bucket, which we could hold two rings on and then put both of them up onto the high stake. But later on, because we did have like a two to three month gap between states and worlds, we decided to go with a, what everybody calls a lady brown. Uh, we chose this design just because it's way more efficient 
to score and de score. It's just a swift movement of going back and forth like over the robot. And then we also do have this little plate here, which we would call like, it looks like a cat, like the two little ears on the side. And this really helps this hole right here, it helps align with the stake. So it's really easy to just drive up to the stake and be able to score with our Lady Brown. Uh, before we talk about interview stuff, Erin, real quick, I want to cover um, from color sensing. I know you were talking about that earlier. What are you utilizing for color sensing? Yeah, of course. So if you notice, there is this little optical sensor right up here. And so what this optical sensor allows us to do is in our code, we'll tell it if the hue range is from a certain number to a certain number. And if it detects that an object is near, then it'll throw a ring out that is our opposing color. The reason why we just use one sensor is so that we can absolutely make sure there's no false positives without using more than one sensor. So we don't want to overuse and do like an optical sensor and a distance sensor. So we just use the optical sensor to kind of just do both. Kayla, one thing I want to wrap up with that, I think it's a very important topic for teams to uh, know more about and really pay attention to is in terms of presentation wise on it. Uh, you have several teams as part of kind of your family of VEX teams on here and your team has taken upon yourself to really coach those teams in their presentation skills more. So can you just talk to me about like what you've been able to do and maybe some advice for teams who want to get better in regards to pre presenting uh, both either the judges or really anything at all? Yeah, so just to give some background information on why the world's interview is so important to us is because our Hawaii um, state championship Actually, we didn't have an excellence winner, so that did make us lose contention to win excellence at Worlds. And so our online interview, as well as our in-person interview for Worlds, we wanted to make sure that it was like to the best of our ability that we would be able to cover basically all the aspects of the engineering design process through each one of those questions. So one thing that I did know when like going through so many interviews, because we did attend like all Hawaii tournaments is that you don't want to just focus on let's say one part of the engineering design process for a question like when they ask oh what's your favorite part of the robot you don't just focus on oh this is my favorite part because because that's just like explaining oh the build section of the engineering design process but you do want to cover everything you want to cover oh how, this is how we brainstormed how we planned we built uh, and we tested so then it covers like the whole thing without having to answer it through the many questions, but you answer it through one question. So you make sure you can tick off all those marks that the judges are looking for just from one question. And looking from, uh, you know, presentation wise, do you notice, and this is just more for my education, does that process of the interviews from like a Hawaii uh, championships versus here at Bex Rules, does that really change at all? Or is it kind of the same thing throughout the entire uh, process you've gone through? I would say the questions here at Worlds were more like, I wouldn't say team-based, but less on the robot side of things. It was a lot more like about our team and how we went through the process instead of, oh, what is this subsystem? Or, oh, what's on your robot? But they did ask a lot of follow-up questions, what I did like because it was on the same topic. Obviously, proven dividends because you did a phenomenal job here in this interview. So, congratulations on all the success your team has had so far. Can't wait to see uh, how you do here at Vexrolls, but really appreciate taking the time to talk about both uh, your robot itself and then also some great insight in terms of interviews. So, thanks a lot and good luck the rest of the way. Thanks for watching. Don't forget to like, subscribe, and click the bell to stay up to date on future fun videos. The Robotics Education and Competition Foundation provides fantastic programs for students from elementary school all the way through college. These include VEX, Aerial Drone Competition, Online Challenges, JROTC, Girl Powered, Scholarships, Certifications, and so much more. To discover these exciting opportunities, visit recf.org and get connected.